Hello and welcome back to another daily Bible reading and discussion. Yes, we're zipping through Luke here. We are zipping through Luke and we are on Luke 9 and this has even more verses than Luke 8 does. Even more. But before we begin, please always remember to heart. Also, you can do the... The care, you care. know, the care bear. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, but comment, let us know you're here and share. And once again, if you ever have any podcasts, questions, things you want us to answer, Ask. Or we have done some reactions. If there are things you want us to react to, mm -hmm. we can do that. Yeah, we, we'd love to do that. Um, and should we, let's be real quiet about this. Shh. We're trying to get Facebook to show us more places by playing into their algorithms. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we are. That and uh, YouTube. Don't tell Facebook. All those places. And by the way, if you don't subscribe to us on YouTube, go to, even if you don't watch us from YouTube, Go there and subscribe because the more subscribers we get there and the mm -hmm. more likes we get there, the more YouTube throws us out there too. Yes, so do. if it's not too inconvenient, which I don't think it is. And, and we want Jesus out there. It's not us. We're, we're dealing with, I just reading the text and talking about it. Yep. Uh, the world needs more <coughs> Jesus. They need to know who he is and what's going on with him. And we're trying to help that. So yep. help us. Absolutely. So Jesus has prepared his disciples. Now he's going to send them out. Interesting how he entrust them with things of, of great importance, even though they're not, if you will, there yet. Yeah, and he, we're going to see that. He lets people take chances with things. It's control, but nevertheless, he, he doesn't have to do everything himself. Yep. So he called the twelve together, gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. He sent them, so this is all demons and cure diseases. So he's given them some major power. Pretty big stuff. He sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. And he said to them, Take nothing for your journey, no staff, nor bag, nor bread, nor money. Do not even have two tunics. And whatever house you enter, stay there, and from there depart. <clears throat> Wherever they do not receive you, when you leave, take that town, shake off the dust from your feet as a testimony against them. And they departed, went through the villages, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. I believe... These first six verses are kind of setting the stage for all the teachings that are going to come next because they're given all this authority, all this power, go out and heal, and they are, they are to trust that God is going to take care of them while they are out mm -hmm. and that God's people, when they're received, they don't have to worry about food, they don't have to worry about clothing, mm -hmm. they don't have to worry about all these things. But now what we're going to see is immediately after this, there's going to be a food shortage. Mm -hmm. What are we going to get food? They're, yeah, they're not it's, learning it's their ironic, lessons. Isn't it? well, there, this has been uh, prophesied to Israel. Yeah, Israel has been waiting for this. The Messiah has come. The Messiah is sending Jews out among Jews to to get this messianic kingdom where it needs to be. So. Israel, as, as the people of God, are responsible for following through with this and moving on. The time will come when they're going out to everywhere that has no relationship with God whatsoever, and they're, they're, they're going to have to take more care of themselves. But I think what it's saying is that if we fancy ourselves to be religious, we have some responsibilities for making sure that those things work. Yep. So Herod's going to hear about this. Bless his heart. He, the, Herod the Tetrarch heard about all that was happening. He was perplexed because it was said by some that John had been raised from the dead because there's similar things happening. I bet he was perplexed. Because <laughs> why? Well, he's going to tell us. By some that Elijah had appeared and by others that the one of the prophets of the old. Herod said, John, I beheaded. But who is this about whom I hear such things? And he sought to see him. Mm -hmm. Curious. Not for any of the right reasons, mind no. you. But he's curious. So it says, on their return, so now we're kind of back to the apostles. The apostles told him all they had done. And he took them and withdrew apart to a town from Bethsaida. When the crowds learned it, they followed him and welcomed them, spoke to them the kingdom of God, and cured those who had need of healing. Now the day began to wear away. The twelve came and said, send the crowds away to go into the surrounding villages and countryside to find lodging and get provisions, for we are here in a desolate place. But he said to them, you give them something to eat. He just sent them out and said, you're going to get taken care of. Yeah. Trust it. And now, well, they, their trust is sort well, of Well, I mean, <clears throat> they've had the ability to cure diseases mm -hmm. and demons. Whatever is needed. He's seen, 
they have seen him um, provide food before, calm the seas, all these kind of great, bring people back from the dead. Now it's a food issue. And he's, he's testing them. You feed them. Let's see what you come up with. Yeah, what can you do? What can you come up with? And I just think the fact that they did all these great things, they're explaining to Jesus all the great things they've done, mm -hmm. and now they don't believe in themselves to even bring forth some food. Yeah, I think that's a lot of it, too. Yeah. Um, he's not always going to be there, right? No. And he said, send the crowds away. All right. But he said to them, you give them something to eat. They said, we have no more than five loaves and two fish unless we are to go and buy food for all these people. For there were about 5,000 men, and he said to the disciples, Have them sit down in groups of, of about 50 each. They did so, and he had them sit down. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he took them up to heaven, or he looked up to heaven and said a blessing over them. And he broke the loaves, gave them disciples to set before the crowd. And they all ate and were satisfied. And <clears throat> what was left over was picked up, 12 baskets of broken pieces. So Jesus shows them. He doesn't really... And here, he doesn't really kind of get all over them. He's understanding that they're still learning, they're still growing, mm -hmm. and he's showing them. And this kind of goes back. His power comes from looking up to heaven, mm -hmm. praying, and blessing it. That's the source. That's the source. And later, when he comes down from the transfiguration in this chapter, what does he say? These come out by prayer, right? This only comes out by prayer. You didn't have enough faith. You didn't... You didn't plug in. Yeah, and so he's he's wanting them to see that even the power that they have, it's not them going out and doing miracles. It's God is still the one doing miracles through them. It's not a toy that they just go out and capriciously use. They're yeah. part of something bigger than themselves. And so this is leading us to the confession of Peter. It is. So now it happened that he was praying alone, the disciples were with him, and he asked them, who do the crowd say that I am? And they answered, John the Baptist, but others say Elijah, and others that one of the prophets of old had risen. Remember, Herod had said they had been hearing, mm -hmm. is this John the Baptist, is Elijah, is this prophets? Yeah, Elijah, it was said, would come before the Messiah came. They don't understand that that, that was John the Baptizer, but they're, they're looking for something to go on here. Yep. And he said to them, but who do you say that I am? And Peter answered, the Christ of God. In the day who I say, you say. Yeah. You say, the only person that matters, what's going on in our heart, everybody else can be talking about it. What am I saying? Yeah. And what we're going to see, though, it's more than saying because Peter's going to say it, mm -hmm. but they're still going to lack faith. You have to actually what does that mean? believe yeah. it mm -hmm. and live it out. Implications of that. Yeah. If it's, he's the Son of God, then there's a lot of therefores after that. Absolutely. So... <clears throat> Jesus is going to do foretell his death. He strictly charged and commanded them to tell this to no one, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed on the third day, be raised up. He said to all, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. So he says, I'm going to go die. You, you must be willing to die. Yes. And the cross, once again, was kind of the symbol of what we would say, if you're not willing to, you know, go to death row for me. Yeah, that's, that's the greatest self-denial of all. Yeah. He says, forever who would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. And that's the very foundation mm -hmm. of the kingdom principle. He even says this in John. He yeah. says this more than once. Yep. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses or forfeits himself? For whoever is ashamed of me, in my words of him, the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in glory, in the glory of the Father and his holy angels. But I tell you truly, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the kingdom of God. So all these, these sayings, this foretelling of Jesus' death, what does the kingdom and Jesus' death have to do with each other? He's got to die first. He's got to die. There's got to be a resurrection. You can't have one of those unless... You have a death. Uh, when he talks about being ashamed of my words, in this context, it simply means he says something that you're expected to follow through with as a believer, and you don't. Yeah. That mean, I mean, whatever you want to call it, however you want to pretty it up, that's being ashamed of Jesus. Yeah, if you're not willing to give it all up for Jesus, then you value mm -hmm. something more than what Jesus has given you. 
uh, Paul, he says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Well, he said a mouthful, and man, did he follow through with that. Absolutely. That's because, like he tells us in Philippians 3, he's counted everything as Loss. dung. Yeah. Loss, dung. Yeah, why would I want to go anywhere else when here it is? Yep. <clears throat> so he's going to show him again who he is. Eight days after these sayings, he took with him Peter and John and James. So they've, they're kind of the ones. Inner circle. Inner circle. He's taking them around. He was praying. The appearance of his face was altered, and his clothing became dazzling white. And behold, two men were talking with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory, spoke of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. So we get a little more here. In the Greek, it's just, it's just a, it's exodus. Yeah. There's a little bit of thingy there going on. Absolutely. And that's what we're talking about, is the exodus was to lead them where? Into the promised, the promised land. land. What is Jesus' exodus leads us into the it's promised the land. Yep. And it helps us go there. <clears throat> And now Peter and those who were with him were heavy with sleep. But when they became fully awake, they saw his glory, and the two men stood with him. And as the men were parting from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Not knowing what he said. Like, he's not understanding Peter. the implications. Yeah, yeah. No, he's thinking, well, you know, you're a pretty big deal here. You're as big a deal as Moses. You're as big a deal as the prophets. No, actually, much bigger deal. He's a bigger deal. And he was saying these things, a cloud came over and overshadowed them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. And a voice came out of the clouds. So we're getting a definitely a Mount Sinai feel here. Mm -hmm. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him. And when, he, and when the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. They kept silent and told no one in those days anything of what they had seen. This is... God is in so many ways showing, listen to Jesus. Well, and <sighs> this is very reminiscent of Mount Sinai. Remember, they were so scared. They didn't want to They didn't want to deal with that. No, this they scared, wanted to stay down below. This scared Peter, James, and John so much, they literally they didn't tell anyone. At least that's what Luke's recording for us. Yes, uh, and again, I understand that because they're human beings. But yeah. on the other hand... They have reason to embrace this yeah. and to go with it and to be joyful. But they haven't yet. And not Jesus yet. knows this. Jesus understands that it's not going to be until after his resurrection yes, that everything's going to go ding, 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 He even ding, tells ding. them that. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll get back. <laughs> yeah. And there are things I could tell you right now, but you but, won't get. So I'm going to let the Spirit do that. <laughs> yeah. Your turn. Oh, okay. Thank you. On the next day, when they came down from the mountain, a large crowd met him. There was a man from the crowd. He shouted, saying, Teacher, I beg you to look at my son, for he is my only boy. And a spirit seizes him, suddenly screams, throws him into convulsion, foaming at the mouth, and only with difficulty it is that we to keep him from mauling him as it leaves. I beg your disciples to cast them out. You can imagine this father plaintively calling upon them. And, and they've shown they have some abilities, and he, he's asking them, and they could not. Because remember earlier, it said he gave them power, power, power over, over all demons. Mm -hmm. So there's something lacking with them. Something going on here. Uh, Jesus answered and said, You unbelieving and perverted generation, how long shall I be with you? Put up with you. Bring your son here. He's got emotions. He's a human being. And some of this stuff just gets on his last nerve. Well, I mean, I think it's the lack of faith in his disciples. Hey, oh, I think that's the you just got thing. back from healing and cleansing people. He's, he's you're kind faltering, of letting them have it there. You're faltering with the feeding. Mm -hmm. You know, the tr we j you just yeah, saw me being like, transfigured, oh, and now oh, you don't oh, have enough faith. Go. Yeah, yeah. Oh. No, this should have been easy peasy. Yeah. But they resorted to themselves rather than to keep plugged into God. While he was still approaching, the demon slammed him to the ground, threw him into convulsion. Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit. And he healed the boy and gave him back to his father. They were all amazed at the greatness of God. Uh, other accounts, when we put the synoptics all together, uh, Jesus lets the man know that if he believes, this can happen. And he says one of my favorite lines of the gospel, I do believe. Help my unbelief. Yeah. That's, that hits me a lot. Yeah. It's not that I'm an unbeliever, but sometimes I don't have as much belief as I need to have. You just want to keep growing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But while everyone was marveling at all that he was doing, he said to his disciples, let these words sink into your ears. 
for the Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. They're having trouble accepting that. He said, listen to me. This is going to happen. This has got to happen. I'm going to be turned, and that's not a good turning over. They're going to do with him as they will. And I wonder if that's the part of where their faith is wavering and why they're unable to do the things that they're trying to do is because as they're giving more pieces of the puzzle, that's the one piece. Jesus going and leaving and dying is mm -hmm. the one thing they have the hardest time accepting. It is. Uh, the, let not your heart be troubled that we have in John 14 right up to the time of when he's going to, to be betrayed. Uh, that piece of the puzzle the most important piece. He spends a lot of time on it. Yes, he does. And, and that is a message for us. Yeah. But they did not understand this statement. <laughs> well, I think a lot of that is they didn't want to understand it. And it was concealed from them so that they could not perceive it. When, when we don't want to go where God wants us to go, <clears throat> we, we'll just never get, get it together. Well, remember, the principle has been, if you have ears to hear, mm -hmm. you will hear. So whenever there is a concealing, it is a concealing of the hearer, yes. not the message. Mm -hmm. Jesus is plainly speaking. Yes. They don't want to go where the want... message is going. They're not there yet. Uh -uh. And it was predicted that it would. Yeah. You know, and Jesus, look at how patient he is working with. Well, guess what? As long as we're willing to keep going with him in spite of our ups and downs and our two forward, one back, he's there for us. Yeah. An argument started among those who, with him who might be the greatest. Boy, this has got to make you feel good, don't you think? But Jesus, knowing that they were thinking in their hearts, took a child, stood him in by his side, and said to them, Whoever receives this child in my name receives me. Whoever receives me receives him who sent me. Well, the one who is least among all of you, this is the one who is great. Wow. Turning it on his head. And I find it amazing that they could, at least the four that were up at the Transfiguration being a part of this discussion, they just watched Moses and Elijah oh, completely disappear. Amazing and this, stuff. This, who, would, who would then tout themselves to try to be greatest in the kingdom if wow. Elijah and Moses aren't great in, yeah, I mean, who in, are in, we? in the yeah. scheme of, in the face of Jesus, and who are we? Mm -hmm. right? The and last I, humans are troubling. Uh, John says, Master, we saw someone casting out demons in your name. Here's another expression of what you were just talking about. We tried to prevent him. I bet that was an interesting sight. Because he does not follow along with us. But Jesus said to him, do not hinder him. For he who is not against us is for or not against you is for you. Now, let's dispel something here. This doesn't mean as long as you go around saying, Jesus, 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 that you can do whatever you want to and you're one of Jesus's. No. He's talking about people who are also following him, his agenda, in his way. This isn't, uh, well, yeah, I know they got all this stuff wrong yeah. and wrong, but, you know, they were yeah, casting out demons, just leave them alone. It nothing to do with anything like that. They, These are people who get it. The apostles thought they were something special because... No. Even they want it to themselves. Well, and one of the things they say, hey, we've given up all these things for you. Mm -hmm. And Jesus says, don't worry, you're going to get your reward. But not everybody, like like the man earlier, remember the man who wanted to follow Jesus? Yeah, yeah. He says, and he says, no, 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 you go there and you this go tell. You. Yeah. Jesus is setting other pieces in place mm -hmm. other than just the apostles. And they'll be glad because they can't be everywhere. And the apostles are getting a little jealous. Hey, <laughs> they're not a part of our little inner posse. Uh -huh. Jesus says, they're for me, though. They may not be following me like you are literally right, proximity, following. And yet they are. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. When the days... We'll press on. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good place to end right there, right? <laughs> uh, when these days were approaching for his ascension, uh, which is, again, a huge, huge event. Yeah. you got to die before you can be resurrected in the sin. He was determined to go to Jerusalem. He sent messengers on ahead of him. And they went and entered a village of the Samaritans to make arrangements for him, but they did not receive him. <laughs> Samaritan Jews, I was going home. Because he was traveling toward Jerusalem, going to hinder him. When his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and sue him? Uh, he turned and rebuked them and said, You do not know what kind of spirit you're of. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, to save them. I got some of that in brackets, yeah. and it may not be in the original text, but the thought is in keeping with what it would have been. 
You know what I find funny? What do you find funny? Earlier, he's telling them to feed people. Yeah. Where are we going to get food? Where are we going to but they believe they can call fire yeah, down out of heaven people to up, burn man. people. We're, we're good for that. Yeah. He's like, you, that's what I'm saying. They don't fully understand the ministry no. of mercy, mm, compassion. grace, compassion yet. That Jesus is here to seek and save the lost, the dis- disenfranchised, the poor, even the Samaritans who right now are not receiving him. Did, did he say something about if you salute your brethren only and <laughs> turn the other cheek and such, I mean, he was serious about that, wasn't Love he? your enemies. Yeah. And you'll be like God. That's part of the kingdom agenda. Yeah. Let's get with it. As they were joining, or as they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And those kind of words are easily said, but Jesus loves reality. Yeah. Jesus said to him, the foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests. Son of man has nowhere to lay his head. He's in an itinerant ministry and sleeping under the stars a lot now. And he said to another, follow me. But he said, Lord, permit me first to go bury my father. He said to him, allow the dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim everywhere the kingdom of God. Another said to him, I will follow you, Lord. But first, permit me to say goodbye to those at home. But Jesus said to him, no one, after putting his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. That's a, I think that's a play to Elisha, who mm. um, when Elijah called him, he was plowing the field. Mm-hmm. And he literally... Off he goes. Off and went. Some of these disciples that are following him, when it comes time to call them, they leave their, their nets and their boats, and off they go. That's, when he's ready, he's ready. Yeah, and uh, if he's calling you, it means he believes you're ready. Exactly. Uh, it doesn't mean that any of these relationships are not important. They no. are, but uh, they're not as important. And there are many ways that well, Jesus he, will address this. He knows them for what they are. Yes. Their excuse is not to follow. They're mm. not legitimate claims. They are trying to find ways to weasel out. Because when they start learning what the kingdom really is and what it really entails, mm-hmm. and it's not calling down fire to consume mm-hmm. the enemies. What fun is that? You know, and I... So I, as we're finishing this, and as you're reading Luke 10, I believe Luke 9 and Luke 10 are almost parallels of each other. They, if read them together, and you can almost outline them the same, one is the 12, this is the 70. This one ends with um, people who are making excuses not to follow Jesus. And Luke 10 is going to end with the Good Samaritan, what are true A Samaritan, mind you. A Samaritan who they're trying to kill yes. in Luke 9. Let's get some fire on these A people. Samaritan shows, yeah, them, shows up, them up. And then the most unlikely disciple is of Mary and Martha. It ends with the person who's just sitting at the feet of Jesus. Listening to what he has to say. Listening to what he has to say. And once again, he's telling them they don't have ears right now, but look yeah. at this woman. Get your eyes <laughs> right. Okay. Showing you up. Yeah. So I think we're going to see that as we get in Luke 10. Mm-hmm. But that's Luke chapter 9. Yes, it is. Disciples are nowhere near ready. To be left on their own. No, they need work. They need work. But then that's how it works with us. That's how it, it works. It doesn't mean we can stay needing work. In some ways we will, but in the biggies and get really getting the this is what the game is about. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah. We need to get there. Absolutely. So once again, give us the heart, care, comment, and share. Well, that was almost like we're, we're getting this down. We got we're getting this down. Yeah. But we love you. Yes, we do. And God bless. Bye bye.